Secretary General, Bangladesh Society of Anesthesiologists, welcoming all of you in first International E-Conference on Pain 2020, organized by Bangladesh Society of Anesthesiologists. This is the second day of first International E-Conference on Pain 2020. Yesterday, it was fantastic inaugural session it started with very special, inspirational message from our beloved Honorable President, the People's Republic of Bangladesh, MD Abdul Hamid, His Excellency. It was a great honor to be at the and first International E-Conference on Pain 2020. Honorable President, His Excellency expressed his realizations for the necessity of the development of pain medicine subspecialty of anesthesia in Bangladesh. WFSL leader, WIP leaders, and other pain societies leaders of many countries joined in that inaugural session. There was subsequent two award ceremony, Lifetime Achievement Award Ceremony and Young Pain Physicians Award Ceremony were there in the last day. There was a very special session on FIPP examination, how to become a qualified pain physician. And it was, uh, it was a very fantastic program for the Young Pain Physician of Bangladesh. And uh, Chair of FIPP Board of Examination, Professor Chris Swippy Visas and EO WIP Mark Tolliver was there. And uh, it was very helpful and informative program for the young pain physicians for getting preparation for the FIPP examination. And it was ended with a fantastic cultural program yesterday. So we are in the second day of the international conference. This is actually the session three. This session will be moderated by our beloved Dr. M.D. Majharul Alom. He's a young pain physician. He has been awarded yesterday with the Young Pain Physician Award. And this session will be uh, uh, chaired by Professor Abdul Rahman Sir, Mainul Professor Mainul Hossain, and Professor Deba Bratabani, and as well as uh, your Professor Shaira, U.S. Shaira Khatun Bella, Madam. Oh, okay. Dr. Shari and Fanas. Shari. Shari, are you here, ma'am? Yes. It, it will out speak up. And she is a consultant of interventional pain management, IOG, head of pain management department, St. George Hospital, pain management consultant at Karma Diabetic Medical Center, Egypt, and founder of Dr. Shri Nabil Fanas Pain Management Clinics. Please proceed, ma'am. Okay. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'd like to thank all the organizers and for such an amazing conference, um, which, uh, which has not just uh, one or two faculty members, but more than 60 faculty members from different backgrounds. So thank you for uh, allowing me to be here. So, uh, Uh, my presentation today is about uh, knee pain uh, diagnosis using ultrasound. Uh, I'm consultant of interventional pain management and uh, uh, currently I'm working in Egypt. Uh, I have no conflict of interest. So for the knee anatomy, I'll just uh, go for the knee anatomy directly. Uh, first, you have to know that there is clinical examination, but I'll skip this part uh, because the lecture itself is very, very large to cover within 15 minutes. So for, to know the, your son anatomy, first you have to know your anatomy. 
Uh, for the knee, there is four main compartments, uh, anterior knee compartment, medial and lateral and posterior compartment. For the anterior compartment, what I'm looking for? First, I'm looking for the quadriceps. Here is the quadriceps tendon and the patellar tendon. And the half phosphate pad, which is underneath the patellar tendon. Uh, for the effusion, I'm looking for the suprapatellar effusion, which would uh, be appreciated if there is fluid in it. Without fluid in it, you can't really see uh, uh, the bursa uh, and you won't be able, able to appreciate it. Uh, another thing in the anterior compartment is the medial plica. Actually, there are four medial plicas in the uh, knee joint, but the main one is the medial plica because uh, this is the one in which when there is an inflammation, this is the one which appears uh, extensively in the ultrasound. Uh, so the plica is a connective tissue in the knee joint. Also, we have to see to, to look at the trochlea. Uh, it has to be nice and smooth and echoic in the ultrasound. Uh, if there is tissue or if there is uh, uh, effusion in it, I would suspect there is an osteoarthritis. Another important thing I'd like to see in the anterior compartment would be the ACL. Here is the ACL, it's, it comes from the femur and to be attached to the tibia. Uh, usually, uh, uh, the patient with the ACL uh, tear uh, uh, would, would have positive anterior drawer test. So here is how I apply this anatomy on the ultrasound. Here is how I do it for the anterior compartment. First, as you see, this is the quadriceps tendon, and this is the patella, and this is the femur. It's very important to look thoroughly on the quadriceps tendon to see that there is no any tear. It's smooth lining parallel to the femur. And my probe, as you see here, is longitudinally. Underneath it would be the quadriceps fat pad. It's also very important to use color Doppler to make sure that there is no hyperemia. Hyperemia indicating that there is inflammation in this tendon. And this is a prefemoral fat pad. Here is also the patella and the femur. You have to go up and down on the longitudinal direction. Now I'm going a little bit lateral. I can see the vastus lateralis. As you know, the quadriceps muscle is a four-headed muscle. So on the lateral side, you can see the vastus lateralis. You have to make sure that it's uh, uh, smooth with no tears in it and go back and forth. Then I'll go back again to the midline. Here is the patella and here is the very interesting medial plica as you can see it. It's a whitish hyperechoic line uh, from the patella reaching to the uh, femur and this is indicating that uh, there is tissue inflammation in the knee joint itself. Here I can see the effusion. As you can see, it's anechoic and there are tissue and depress here. Uh, very important to measure the effusion. Uh, so uh, uh, the effusion, it might be at the lower. It might be one hand press, one hand breaths from the uh, knee joint, or it might be uh, more than this. Measuring your effusion is very important in order to follow up with your patient. Here is the effusion. This effusion was about hand breaths above the patient's uh, knee joint. So tissue depress here is ind indicating chron chronicity. So I know that this is not an acute uh, effusion because acute effusion for me, it's a ringing bell. Uh, some reports have indicated that leukemia can present with an acute effusion. And actually I have faced uh, a patient uh, with leukemia and he was diagnosed from the acute effusion. So by, by finding the tissue depress, this means that it's 
a little bit chronic, not acute one. Uh, here is the plica, media plica, indicating irritation in the knee joint. This is another scan. Here, look at the quadriceps tendon. It's smooth with no irregularities. It's, uh, it looks very good. Uh, here also, I can see the suprapatellar bursa filled with fluid and effusion. And here I can find lots of depress parallel. And this would be very difficult if you are going to uh, uh, aspirate this effusion. Your needle might be entangled with this depress because it's uh, actually aligned longitudinally within the uh, bursa. As you can see, it's a very big effusion. Here is another scan with the medial plica and here you can find calcification. How I knew this is calcification? Because it doesn't allow ultrasound uh, beams to pass underneath. As you can see, there is a gap underneath the uh, calcification. Quadriceps tendon. And this is the effusion. Also, to, to make sure that this is effusion, not anisotropy, because anisotropy is error in the scanning. So, and this is very common in the shoulder joint and knee joint. To make sure that this is not anisotropy, you have to do as I'm doing, you have to be compressing all the time to make sure that it's bouncing. So whenever there is effusion, it would be bouncing effusion. Also, there is tissue depressed. It uh, makes me think that this is a chronic, uh, patient, not an acute one, not acute uh, effusion, as you can see. I'm compressing all the time, as you can see. I'm compressing, making sure that this is compressible fluid to make sure that this is effusion, not anisotropy. Then I have to scan in the transverse. This is the rectus femoris, vastus intermedius, and femur. I'm here scanning uh, in the tra transverse scan. The vastus medialis started to appear, rectus femoris, and vastus intermedius. All the time, I have to make sure that there is no tear in the muscles. Here is also the vastus medialis and the femur. Now I'm on the medial side, the vastus medialis. I'm going back to the midline, vastus, medialis, uh, rectus femoris, and vastus inter intermedius. Now I'm going to the lateral side to check the vastus lateralis. So this is the vastus lateralis, it started to appear. And I can see on the, uh, uh, my right hand side, the rectus femoris and the vastus intermedius. Now I'm looking for the genicular nerves. I have to put my, my probe uh, at the uh, uh, junction between the femoral condyle and the femoral shaft, and I look for pulsations. Here I can find genicular vessels. The genicular nerves is just beside the vessels. So just put your probe between the femoral condyle and the shaft and start looking for pulsations as I have done, and your nerve would be just beside the pulsation. So this is the genicular vessel and my, my nerve will be just beside it. Now I'm moving to the longitudinal again. I'm here in the patella. I'm going down. This is the patellar tendon, half was fat pad, and the femoral condyle. If I'm going up again, this is the quadriceps tendon. So the quadriceps tendon is cephalad, and the patellar tendon is caudal. I'm looking at the patellar tendon. It's smooth, uh, running parallel, and with no uh, tear in the tendon itself. Of a fat pad, I can also use color Doppler to make sure that there is no hypremia here. And then I would like to look at the ACL at the end of the patellar tendon. I find a line going down, and this would be the ACL. It has to be smooth line running down. Then I'm going to uh, make a transverse view. 
And here is my trochlea. It's anechoic, surrounded by two hyperechoic lines, and this is the quadriceps tendon. It looks very smooth with no tissues inside it. So now I'm moving to the medial compartment. For the medial compartment, I have to look for the medial collateral ligament from the uh, femur to the tibia. Also, I have to look for the medial meniscus. And the pes and stream bursa. For the pes and stream bursa, it un it's underneath uh, the three uh, very famous tendons, uh, which are the sartorius and then the gracilus. And then you will find uh, muscles which is very posterior. It's not, it's not among the complex. It's the semimembranosus. It's not a part of the complex because it's very posterior. But the one who was anterior is the semitendinosus. And then you would find the medial collateral uh, ligament and the pes and stream bursa. Pes and stream bursa for me, when I find it, it's normally uh, can't be detected when there is no effusion or when there is no inflammation in this uh, uh, complex uh, tendons. But whenever there is inflammation, you will find that this bursa uh, is filled with fluid. And sometimes if you, if you have a high resolution machine, you can really see the tendons, three tendons, very uh, rounded or oval tendons on the medial side of uh, the leg. So uh, this is a scan for the medial compartment. Now I can see there is a huge effusion on the medial compartment. And if you look, look here, this is the meniscus. There is a tear in this meniscus. This is not a normal meniscus. And the medial collateral ligament is extending very high. The meniscus width has to be 0.65 uh, in width. If it's more than this, it means that uh, there is a tension on the medial collateral ligament. As you see here, this is not a normal uh, uh, medial meniscus and there is effusion on the medial side and there is also tissue depress inside uh, uh, inside this effusion. So now I'm moving to the lateral uh, compartment. For the lateral compartment, I will be looking for the lateral collateral ligament. It, uh, it lies from the uh, femur to the fibula. I'd also be looking for the lateral meniscus and for the knee effusion. So this is a scan for the lateral compartment. As you can see, this is a meniscus. It's not a normal one. It's a, it doesn't take the, the normal V shape. And above it is the lateral collateral ligament. It's very extended and definitely the width is beyond 0.65. And you will see here effusion. I have to scan up and down, cephalate and coded. Uh, the lateral meniscus is very uh, distinguished with uh, uh, a branch, genital branch of the popliteal. Usually this is not found in the medial, uh, on the medial meniscus. As you can see here, there is a branch of the uh, popliteal, genital branch of the popliteal. And this is the iliotibial tract. If I track it up, 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 I'll track it to the fascia iliaca. You can see this wide band. This is the iliotibial track. I can track it to the fascia iliaca and uh, gluteus maximus. Here it's nice and parallel to each other. So, My last compartment would be uh, the posterior compartment. Here I'm looking for the Baker cyst. Uh, there is three criteria to say or to uh, diagnose a Baker cyst. First, it has to lie between the uh, uh, medial head of the gastrocnemius and the, the semimembranosus muscle. Second, it has to be a cyst. Third, it has to have a neck. Fourth, it has to be attached to the joint. There are four criteria. If one is missing, this is not a Baker cyst. Another thing I'd like to look for the posterior uh, cruciate ligament. This is the gastrocnemius muscle. I removed it and here is the posterior cruciate ligament. As you can see it. Also, I, has to, I have to look for the knee effusion. This is a scan for the posterior compartment. This is the gastrocnemius muscle. This is the popliteal artery. 
it's pulsating and when I put apply color Doppler and this line is a, a knee capsule and here is this is a, a this is a knee capsule and this is ideal to uh, do the IPAC uh, um, injection between the popliteal and the uh, capsule. So now I'm moving up and down. Here is the uh, uh, knee trapea, posterior knee trapea. Here is the popliteal. I'm starting to move up and down. And then on the medial side, I started to find an anechoic uh, appearance. I don't know what is this, so I had to put color Doppler. I put color Doppler, it's not pulsating. So I had to track it. I tracked it, it took me to the medial side of the knee, and it took me to an area between the medial gastroconemius and the semimembranosus. So, it's uh, an anechoic and it's between the medial gastroconemius and semimembranosus. There are missing two criteria. It has to be a cyst and it has to have a neck attached to the knee joint. Let's see. I can find that it's a cyst. It has a neck. It's a cyst. It has a neck. I followed this neck. As you can see, it's attached to the knee joint. The neck is attached to the knee joint. Cyst, neck, and it's attached to the knee joint. So this is definitely a Baker cyst. Thank you very much. I hope that I kept my presentation within time. Thank you, thank you, you ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Sherry, for your great support. Um, uh, special thanks to you as uh, you have finished your presentation within given time. Thank you so much.